insight. Thank you for illumination. Thank you because darkness and ignorance give way. Thank you because, oh God, giants will arise as a result of the teaching tonight. Jesus is glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. So on Sunday we began the teaching on what is prayer. And we said prayer is actually expressing our desires to God. And that it involves talking. That prayer cannot be thinking. Prayer must be verbalized. And I remember quoting the book of Third John where uh, the guy said, I wish above all things. That prayer is not wishing. And in the actual sense, guy simply means I pray above all things. So we are not called into wishful thinking. We are called to pray. Hallelujah. I remember we also make mention of the Father. Prayer is making our desires known to the Father. So prayer can't be thinking but words have to be spoken and that is what we define prayer to be. Again, we made mention of First Peter chapter 3 and I want us to take off from there today. First Peter chapter 3 verse 12 and we had to say this because of who God is when it comes to the subject of prayer. I want you to just turn to somebody and say God's faithfulness is the reason for our prayer. You wouldn't pray to anyone who is not faithful because he is faithful is the reason we pray. He said, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears open unto what? Their prayers. So, because of this, we are you know, challenged to pray. Because of his faithfulness, his faithfulness is stirs our faith up and this is how we pray then uh, the man called James took time out to explain who God is when it comes to prayer James chapter 1 verse 5 and I want you to follow because of what I'll be teaching you tonight because my emphasis will be on how to receive answers to your prayer what did I say how to receive answers to your prayer People pray and not too many receive answers to their prayer. And so by the time we do the teaching today, that helps you. If any of you lack what? Let him ask of God that given. So let's settle something God gives. That's the reason we pray. And how does he give? The Bible says he gives to all liberally. Now notice that the word men there is in italics. It was supplied by the you know, translators. The actual sense, he gives to all. Whether you're a man or you're a woman, he gives to all. Now, look at what he said. And upbraided not, and it shall be given. So, you give me two different renderings, we'll come back to King James. So, you give me, if you please, uh, NRT, and then we'll do Amplified. Please, I want you to just follow. He says, if you need wisdom, ask our who? Generous God. So, this is what really prepares our prayer having something at the back of my mind that he's generous. So I pray. It's like when you say, this man, anytime you ask him for anything, he never says no. So our God is a generous God that never says no. Is that okay? Now look at what he says. And he will give to you, he will not rebuke you for asking. You see the reason we pray? The reason we pray is that we have a father who doesn't say, why are you asking? Again, we've been taught wrongly to say you are asking for too much. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says he's not going to rebuke you for asking. Now, the amplified version is actually what I'm looking for. He said, if any of you is deficient of wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. Everybody say, the giving God. So, who is your father? He's a giver. That is what propels your prayer. So, my prayer is informed by who my father is. Can I say that again? My prayer is informed by who my father is. It is because of who my father is that motivates me to pray. So if God is not a giving God, I will not be motivated to pray. So my prayer is tied to the fact that I have a father who gives. So each time I pray, my mind should be settled that he is giving. Oh, come on, talk to me. Because I told you tonight, we zero in on how to receive in the place of prayer. Because quite a number of people pray, they don't know how to receive. Now, take note of the word, who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching. Now, why would you think that the rendering will have to use all of these things? He just wants to make sure you don't have doubt when you come to ask him. 
Can I say that again? He's saying that he, is un he will do it ungrudgingly without reproaching. You know, there are people you go to ask for things. He said, look, how many times? Am I the only one? But God never does that. So that alone is what informs our prayer. So we must settle this because until we know who our father is, prayer will not be interesting. What makes prayer interesting is knowing who our father is. That any time we ask, he's always excited giving to us. He said, ungrudgingly, without reproaching, and look at the other word I love, or fault finding. So he doesn't find fault when you ask. So for man, when man asks, man will find fault. He said, the other day I gave to you, you did this. Look at, you didn't say good evening to me before asking. I didn't even like the way you carried yourself. You just walked into my living room as though this is your house. No, he doesn't find fault. Without fault finding, this is the part that excites me. And he will be given him. So there is a certainty that it will be given. Say to your neighbor, there is a certainty that it will be given. Now, so where is the challenge? Please follow me now. So we'll go to King James. We'll do verse 6 and 7. That's where the challenge is. Where is the challenge? And I want you to learn this with me. But, why but? There's a change of subject. Why but? He has explained to you who your father is. And then like Pastor Barry will always say, there is a caveat. But let him ask in faith. So what do you suppose is his faith? Hello, look at me. What do you suppose is his faith? Think. Don't be in a hurry. Now, because when you use the word faith, it becomes vague. Look up. What do you suppose is the word faith here? Let him ask in faith. So what faith? The faith is talking about knowing that it's a giving God. So you go back to verse 5. That is the faith. Let him ask in the faith that the father that has been introduced gives. The father that has been introduced, he does not find fault. The father that was introduced, he does it liberally. That is the faith there. The faith there is not... And that is where the challenge is. The believer has faith supplied to him. You didn't hear me. We have the we having the spirit of what? Faith as it is written. Do we have the spirit of faith? The faith they sought for under the Old Testament was sealed and delivered. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it's a looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of what? So I have faith. Stop looking for faith to please God. You have the faith of God. Am I communicating? But look at the faith he's talking about here. The faith talked about here is the faith that let him ask God that giveth. So the faith will be, as I'm asking this God gives to me, that's the faith. It does not find fault. And it does it liberally. So that is the faith. The, my mindset or my mentality is I'm asking the father who gives. He does it liberally. He does not find fault. He does not reproach. And the last word, it shall be given him. So the faith is that I'm coming to a God who gives, a God who does it without fault finding, and a God who does not restrain. That is the faith. When they say, let him ask in faith. So what faith? The faith that is a giving God. The faith that is a generous God. The faith that is not the fault finder. And the faith that he gives. Am I communicating? So let's get to the next verse. And I want you to be very tactful in what we are about to do. It would have been better you didn't come to church to miss what I'm about to say. But let him ask in faith. Which faith? The faith that is oh, come on. Look at how you now put it. Not wavering in who he is. The wavering is not you. It's in what you think about him. Talk to me. The wavering is what you think about your God. Will he do it? Will he not do it? He said, don't waver. Because you should know he is a giving God. He does it liberally. He does not find fault and he gives. So let, let him ask in that mindset. Not wavering. He shouldn't say, will God change his mind today? He said, for he that wavered. You see, the problem is not the giving God. The problem is with the people how to receive. Did you hear it? Did you see the Bible say, God shouldn't waver? No, it's the person asking. Let him not, let him ask in faith, not wavering, for the person, he that wavered, is like a wave of the sea, 
driven with the wind and tossed. That is, it's never stable. Then today, God will do it. Tomorrow, that prophet told me, God will never hear my prayer. I remember a man told me one day in this church, he said, so and so people that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, they will never have. Say, this one will have, this one will have, this one will not have. God showed me. I said, not God. If God is to speak, he will speak to you. He will speak to the angel that he has put over the church. And to the glory of God, the one he said will not deliver has delivered since. You know why? I just said no because I know one thing. He gives. God never withholds from anybody. Stop your neighbor. Say he never withholds. So where is the challenge? The challenge is in our wavering, in our not asking in faith. How do we ask in faith? Knowing that he gives, knowing that he does not rebuke us and that he does it generously. Am I communicating? Now look at the next verse. I want you to follow because it is how to receive that has been the challenge. People pray, especially Africans, especially Nigeria. Tomorrow will be Friday and being Friday, vigils everywhere. It's not about the prayer, it's about how to receive. And I'm explaining something. Look at it. For let not that man think. So where is his problem? In his thinking. It is in his thinking he says, hmm, will God do it? It is in his thinking that he says, will God not find fault? It is in his thinking he will say, ah, will God not say I'm tired of you? It's in his thinking. So he said, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Question, is he giving? Is he giving? He's giving. But is the man receiving? Where is the fault? In his thinking. In his thinking. Because I'll be showing you a few things Kenny Hagin said. Sorry, E.W. Kenyon said. But before then, I want to give you a teaser. Let's check something out in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22. Now we have a similar account everywhere. But I want us to just take it one after the other. And all things. How many things? Whatsoever you ask in. Now look at the next word. Believing. Comma. That's what thing, one thing people don't observe. Believing. Comma. Ye shall receive. Who does the receiving? You. How do you do the receiving? Believing what you said. Are you saying that it is not with God? God has given, but people don't know how to receive it. He said, You believe in, you receive. That is to say, you are not in doubt as to will God say no or yet. So, my believing is, He is a giving God. He does not find fault, He does it generously, and He gives. So, He said here that, and all things whatsoever you ask. In prayer. So he was not talking about something else. It's in prayer. Now how do I receive believing? I believe that that thing I ask, I receive it. You shall have it. Now the word you shall receive is possession. You have it tangibly. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. Now I'll give you another example of Jesus in Mark 11, 23 and 24. And I want you to clean your ears. If I were you, don't let anything distract you. Do you know why? The subject we are treating is a subject that you need all your lifetime. I hope you know that. So there are things that when I'm learning, I learn it with the whole of my life because I can never escape it. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, next year. So I, need, I better learn it so that I don't live like a victim. I live as a victor. Amen. Now, he said, for verily, I say to you that whosoever, whosoever is anybody, so the issue of God has a favorite is not in the place of prayer. Can I say that again? The issue of God has a favorite is not in the place of prayer. Hey, Pastor, it's because you were the one that prayed it. I know you are anointed. No, every believer is anointed. You know what the anointing is? The Holy Spirit. So if every believer has the Holy Spirit, every believer is anointed. Come on, talk to me. Now look at it. He said, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, irrespective of the person's position, be thou removed. Now, scholar says, 
there would have been mountains around when Jesus was saying this mountain. So the disciples could relate with it. Hello, am I communicating? Now he said, be that removed and be that cast into the sea. Look at what we have been dealing with since. And shall not and shall not doubt in his heart. But that those things which he, 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 he said, he said shall come to pass, what will happen? He shall have. You see, the challenge has always been, we don't believe what we are saying. E.W. Kayon said something that I'll never forget. He said, if you ask the Father for something in the name of Jesus, the first thing you need to do, act as though you have it. Your acting must show it. You shouldn't act dejected. You shouldn't look down. We like, oh. He said, bro, have you finished praying? He said, I don't really know. Don't act that way. Number two, he said, talk as though you have possessed it. Because he's always a giving God. Why did he say you should do this? He is because if you don't walk like this, it will affect your mind. Your thinking, you will be tossed to and fro. Do you know that a lot of people pray today and the next statement they make from their mouth will contradict the prayer they have prayed? Oh, come on. Did you hear what I just said? People can pray now and the next statement they made hereafter is a statement that contradicts what they have prayed. He said, I will not die. I don't know the way things are going. People are just dying. But the same man who just said he will not die, he has started saying otherwise. Hello, church. Am I communicating? He shall not die. But that's not where I'm taking you to. Everybody look up to 24 and don't get distracted. Therefore, there is something for you there. That's why I say, dear, I say unto you, what things so ever ye desire. Is it God's desire or your desire? You know, I just prayed that thing. I didn't receive answer because it's not the will of God. Kai, what's wrong with you? God works through your desire to release what you want. What you desire when you pray. Everybody say, when you pray. Now, what is the meaning of when? The time. So any time you want to take delivery of what belongs to you, it's up to you. You take delivery of it. He said, when you pray, what should happen? What should happen when you pray? You are not in church today. You are writing, I know. When you pray, what happened? Yeah, believe that you receive. You lambano that thing. You seize it. What did I say? You seize that thing. Believe that you receive. Who will do the believing for you? Pastor? Who will do the believing for you? God? God is constant. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. He is liberal to the extent that he will not find fault, he will not reproach you, and he gives. Now look at this place. He said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, any time you pray about that thing, believe that you receive. He didn't say pray and be say, I hope I have it. Can I say that again? Don't say I hope. You know people can finish praying and they are hoping. But the Bible says believe I have it. So I have it. I prayed about it. Brother, don't bother. I prayed about it. I have it. He said you don't have it. He said no. You know the story of Yonge Cho? When oh I've got my table. I've got my bicycle. He said show us. He said I received it already in the spirit. And then, look at what happened. When I believe I receive it, and you shall have. The word have is possession. That is, I receive it even when I am not seeing it. So my receiving, my receiving it brings it to my seeing it. So my seeing it is going to be predicated on my receiving it. So I don't receive when I have. I receive, I, I, I don't, I, I won't say I have because, no, I receive it even when I don't see it. But receiving it is my having it. Am I communicating? Did I confuse anybody? So we must settle this in our heart. Because in the place of prayer, the challenge has always been, how do I receive? Because people just pray. 
They just pray. God always hears us and it is, it, it is in this understanding we have confidence in asking because he always hears. So it's our responsibility to receive what has been given to us by faith. And what faith? We'll go back to James chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. What faith? The faith that He's a giving God. So when we say faith here, now you now understand the faith. It's not the faith you are looking for. It's the faith you have, but not in your thought. This is a giving God. That's the faith. Am I communicating? All right. Now, let's do something. In 1 Timothy 2.8, 1 Timothy 2.8, whoever is on the council, we're almost through tonight so that we'll take time out to pray. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. I hope they are not having any challenge here. All right, let's use our Bible and not get used to the monitor. First Timothy chapter 2 and um, verse 8. I love it. First Timothy 2 8. If you are there, say Amen. I read. He said, But, oh, sorry, I was reading First Timothy 1. It's chapter 2. I will, what is God's will? Therefore, that men pray where? What is God's will? Everywhere. Everybody says, I can pray anywhere. <laughs> Look at the will of God. You know, it's not the will of This is God's will. Come on. Not a bad you. This is God's will. Can we read it again? Look at your Bible. I want you to face your Bible. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without what without rot and doubting because that's a game changer everywhere without rot without doubting that is ask in faith knowing who he is don't get angry. I don't know. I don't know. I've been praying this way. No. You are praying with an understanding of who your father is. Number one, his ears are open because of your prayer. Number two, if you lack wisdom, ask is a giving God. He gives liberally to the extent that he does not find fault. And he said, it shall be given. Now, now I did add on another one. First, John and chapter 5 verse 14 First John turn in your Bible with me please First John chapter 5 verse 14 if you are there say amen, amen. alright let's do this it says in verse 14 and this is the confidence that we have in him if we ask how many things according to his what happens does God answer prayer he just hears that's why his ears are open does God answer prayer how does he answer prayer we have this confidence how many of you have that confidence now it is his faithfulness that informs our prayer so prayer should not just be Oh, what? what is going on? Have you prayed? You know, people have so used, they are so religiously used to prayer that they pray just to satisfy their curiosity. I say, but I pray though, I don't know. They, you can see from their statement that they are not talking with authority. They are not talking with that confidence. They say, ah, what really happened? I, I pray though, I don't know, but I pray, but, 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 I prayed. No, that confidence is not there. And that's what we need to change. Because that is the place where our faith is expressed. Our confidence in who our father is. Because the challenge has never been with God. The challenge has always been on how you receive. You know, I made an illustration yesterday or two days ago while we were prayed here. And I asked people to turn off the switch of the light controlling the entire hall. And they did. And the first question I ask, is there power being supplied? Why don't we have light? The switch has been turned off. 
That is exactly what happened. Is has, has God given? Why are we not receiving? We have turned off the switch of doubt. Oh, come on, did you? We just turned on the switch of what? Doubt. Uh, uh, we God do it. After all, that, that man. And we have turned certain things upside down. That man said when he prayed and fasted 50 days. See, the Bible didn't add fasting here. Can I shock you again? I said the Bible didn't add fasting. That I will, therefore, that every man everywhere lifting up holy hands. Was there fasting attached to it? No. He said when you pray, was there fasting attached to it? Fasting is not to get God. Fasting is on you. Can I say that again? Fasting is not to get God. Fasting is on you. So you don't use fasting to receive answers to your prayer. You use your understanding of who your father is to receive answer for your prayer. He said, ah, I will add fasting to it so that God will move fast, fast, fast. Well, I know your problem. It's your religion. Are you against fasting? I fast. I mean, you know I fast. But fasting is more is on me. It's not on God. Can I say that again? Fasting is on me. It's not on God. I'm not fasting because I want God to do it quickly. You know, say, oh, what kind of fast did you do? Make it dry. Let God see that you are, you are give me or I die. If you die, we'll bury you and the gospel will still be preaching. Praise God. But we must understand how to receive. That has been the challenge. How to what? Receive in the place of prayer. I close with this. I'll go back to that James 1, 5, 6, 7, and I'll ice it with the book of Ephesians 4. And I'll be true. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Thank you, media. If any of you lack what? Now, you know, this subject is properly understood when it comes to the issue of trial. So, if you don't mind, would you start from verse 1? So, follow me. Because we just went into the middle of a thought. It was the middle of a thought. Everybody look up. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My count it all when you fall into so what do you suppose he was dealing with when he said if you lack wisdom it is when it has to do with trial and temptation is that correct he now said knowing this that the trying of your work at word next verse now he's not saying but let patience have a perfect that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing there he does say if in the midst of your trial and temptation, you need wisdom. Are you seeing the contest under which it was said? So the wisdom, you know, hey, hey, wisdom, wisdom for exploit, wisdom for uncommon favor. Something is wrong with Pentecostals. What is being discussed here is wisdom for temptation and trial. True or false? Did we read it here? So if you not lack wisdom, let him ask. Of God. He gives how? Liberal. And he does not rebuke you. And what will happen? And he shall be given. That's the one I love. And he shall be given. So the giving is not a problem. Look at where it now says, but let him. The person asking, let him ask in faith, the faith of what we read. Knowing. That this, my father, is a giving God. He's a generous God. He's Libra. He does not upbraid. And he shall be given. Come on, talk to me. For, oh, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavered is like what? A wave of the sea, driven with the wind and talk. So hold it there. We'll check Ephesians and chapter 4. And there we draw the curtain for tonight. Now, I want us to pray anyway. We're not just ending. Jesus Feketo Killa Tes Perada Shikenena Zalaki ne Monde Kile into Fagata. Yes, thank you, Lord. We receive wholeness for that sister. We command a condition in the stomach region 
to be normal right now. Do you will not need to go for a surgery? Yes, we don't need a surgery. The healing power of God touches you right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just had a word for somebody, so we're done with that. All right, verse 14. Is it where I quoted? Verse 14. I quoted. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. So, what are the characteristics of these children now? Toss, toe, and fro. What we read in James 1 5. Are you remembering it now? So, it's only a child that sometimes doubts the ability of his father. It's not how long you've been in church that makes you a mature Christian. It's your understanding of who your father is that makes you a mature Christian. Am I communicating that we henceforth be no more children? How? Toss, tow, and fro, and carry the bow with every wind of what? So, what informs people not asking in faith? Doctrine. Can I say that again? What informs people not asking in faith? Doctrine. What is the doctrine? What you have been taught. When you are taught wrongly, that sometimes God will say yes, other times God will say no. And with that doctrine, whenever you want to pray, you're always saying, God may not answer me. It is a doctrinal issue. Am I communicating? But once you are properly taught to know your father is a giving God, he does not rebuke you when he gives, and he shall be given. Then, you stand in the strength of that, you are asking in faith. You won't waver, because doctrine is the reason people waver. Am I communicating? Now, that's what the, 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 the ministry gift does in the body of Christ. He said that we henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every word wind of doctrine. By what? The slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The end result of wrong teaching is deceiving many people. Am I communicating? So a man who wavers is a function of what he has been hearing. A man who wavers is a function of what he has been learning. A, a man who wavers is a function of his doctrine. So your doctrine informs your exercising of faith. Some people are saying, hey, I wish my faith is like that of the pastor. You don't need my kind of faith. God has dead to every one of us. We have the faith of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says so. Maybe we we'll put it up so you establish that. 2 Corinthians 13, where did I go? 14 verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4 13. Second, thank you. Everybody, read this with me. We, we, is it some people? We, the saints, according as it is written. I believed and therefore what? We also believe. What do we do? We express it. Ephesians 4 5. Ephesians 4 5. I just to flesh this out. Ephesians 4 5. It's not part of my note, but I want you to understand. One, 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 Lord, one word again. Do we have two faith? One, no, one, Lord, one. Wow. Stop saying, hey, I wish I had the faith of pastor. Pastor, by what he's learned, or what he has learned through doctrine, has grown from being a child to knowing what belongs to him. So he's just acting those things out. You have the same faith, the same spirit of faith. You refuse to grow to know what belongs to you. And as such, your, what you act, you are acting like a baby, toss to and fro by the wrong teaching you have been hearing. Hello? So help me look at your neighbor and say, I don't have a faith problem. I'm not looking for faith. I have the same spirit of faith. What the most powerful faith man has, I have. Now I'm learning how to grow in what I have. Blessed tonight.
Come on, make some noise in the house. Glory. Hallelujah. So I remind you of what E.W. Keon said. If you have asked the Father for something in the name of Jesus, act as though you have it, talk as though you possess it, and never allow yourself speak as though you don't have it. Never allow yourself. Don't talk as though nothing has happened. Keep speaking it. Keep saying. So keep saying it. So mightily grew the word. Have you seen the word of God growing in your Bible? No, he's talking about the influence of the word on that individual. It will grow mightily and then prevail over that circumstance. The word does not grow more than the size of your Bible. The word growing is the influence of the word in the life of the hearer, causing tremendous things to take place. I thought some of you will open up your mouth and pray in the spirit tonight. I just want us to pray for a, for a while. Balanda Sharatita Bolunga Evuzu 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 Epande Kizonanta Ratiza Temenkit E Parasite Afagadi Yanamakazi Tunia Delande Sekengo Sheninga Avangetia Abalakeno 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 Abevuzuzi Amelura Neto Tenem Bravi Gaza, Shenimante, Teba, Paransha, come in there, express yourself. E teni, 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 ke. Wande sa, fraganemo, e gana sote, jagata pa, e paranete, se fragata, sheta mankata, le kratata, mamprata li, e varate nenente, e le genente, e le genente, e le genente, e le genente, ha ha ha, itana de and the brother shoot her specky so long the and the man she should get a a lot of yeah they get that the other get the other a felice a fair 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 O Gunege, O Gunege, a Balanian and a Gata Sieta, Talibananga, Hasata. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. I have a word of knowledge for someone here, but I, I want us to just pray one prayer before I get into that. In Mark 11, 23 and 24, I want you to pray with it. You will look for a mountain and address now. Then believe you receive. You, did you get what I just meant? You just, because we don't want to teach for you to know. We want you to teach. We want to teach you know and you practice it. Is that okay? So, for verily I say unto you what is that mountain? That whosoever anybody, you don't need a pope to do it for you. You don't need a prophet to do, for, do it for you. Say unto this mountain. So, the mountain may be a financial mountain. It may be your admission in school. It may be someone saying you will not graduate here. It may be something that you just say only God can help me. So you can address that mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. But believe that those things which he seeth. Is what you say. Not what pastor say. Shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Verse 24. Which is where we taught from. How to receive it now. He said therefore. I say unto you. What things soever you desire. When you pray. Believe. So I want you to stand on your feet. Speak to that particular thing. I yours is different from mine. But and then see yourself with the answer. Did you hear what I just said? See yourself with what? The answer. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. You are not praying for me. I hope you know. You have something you need to address. And then you need to address that thing. Open your mouth and address that thing. Address that thing. Address that thing. Open your mouth. 
address that thing. Open your mouth. Say something to it. And as you say it, be, believe you receive it. And that's what we just thought. We want you to put to practice what you just heard. Re receive. Believe you receive it. And, say, and you shall have it. And so when you live here, what you say must, in, must be in sync with what you pray. Your actions must be in sync with what you pray. And then never talk yourself out of what you have spoken. Yes, yes. You say it and you believe it and that is what it is. And this is how to enjoy a life of victory. The Bible says whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith Push a path, fair vikita, meras provi, janaha, anaha, 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 anaha. Thank you. Ya ne ne tu shedaha. In the name of Jesus. Now, there's someone here, the Lord will have me say this to you. For some days you have had a heaviness in your heart. And the heaviness has been the heaviness of, Lord, when will this thing change? How will I come to a place of ease? But I hear the Lord say, sweetness is all over you. Look around you. There is sweetness around you. That not many days from today, you will see the sweetness all around you. And you will also rejoice and say, Lord, I thank you. Because I thought there was no way. But unknown to me, you have made sweetness available for me. Say the spirit of the Lord. There's someone here, the Lord will have me to say that to you. Sweetness, 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 sweetness. Sweetness is yours. The things that cause discouragement, the things that made you think, oh, there's no light on the other side of the tunnel. God will have me say to you, there's sweetness. Yeah, you will rejoice, say the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's take questions. Bless tonight. Any question? You see, we do everything to it's just 729. Question. Yes, feel free. Where's the microphone? See microphones there. You want to take my take the two if you don't mind, so that uh, I can see many hands being raised already. Before pastor, pastor's question should not shake my leg. I know power-based questions. That one is tech. He's working in technical department of question. <laughs> Thursday last week, he asked me from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Which violence is that one? I cooled down. When I finished answering, he forgot to say, Start clapping immediately. He said, Check, we have been deceived. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Papisa, in your course of teaching, yes. you came across the word. First Timothy chapter 2 verse, verse 8, eight yes. and um, it sounds like it is an instruction yeah. given to men. Yes. And Everywhere then, to and, pray. And then verse 9 sounds like an instruction Next given verse. to women. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. We First Timothy have. 8 9 uh, 2. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel mm -hmm. with shame facetness and sobriety, not with bro broidered hair or gold or pears or costly apparel. So it's an instruction for women. Best mm -hmm. Continue. Next. It's a but which with good works. <coughs> professing godliness mm -hmm. with good works. All right. Okay, sir. sir, please, can you, you know, in our church today, yes. a lot of men of God have. You know, women are being subjected somehow in churches because of this particular verse. I'll answer you. Okay. God we serve is called the beauty of holiness. Beauty of... Is it the beauty of ugliness? Women should look good. But there's a caveat there. That for the good works, he used sobriety, shamefacedness. So if we use those language, we will not understand. That's why we have different rendering. So we'll go to message rendering, verse 9. So we will get modern English. When you're saying shame facade, he's saying be modest. In, so, in summary, it's modesty in your attire. He said, and I want women to get in there with the, with the men in wealth, humility, before God. Not pre, prime, primping. 
before a mirror or chasing the latest. We are breaking it down. Go ahead now. Thank you, message. message. And I want women, okay, this is on our one. And I want women to be modest. Is That is all that he's talking about. You know, I've heard some people say, do you see my dress? The spirit of God told me to dress like this. Check it. You really know it's a spirit that has them to dress. Because they look like Agaba. They wear green, purple. You, you know the spirit. Only spirit can instruct people to dress like that. Uh, because God will, not, God will not tell you how to dress. What did I say? No, let's be very frank. God will not tell you. You know, I've seen women who are trying to be spiritual. The Holy Spirit told me not to be wearing trousers again. It's a lie. It's your doctrine. The doctrine you have fed yourself with is, is what has informed the voice you are hearing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the spirit that is telling you is the spirit that breathed upon this. And that same spirit is not against what you are against now. They say contradiction. Am I communicating? So, look at it. And I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pears or expensive clothes. Did he say you should not look beautiful? He, he said, don't be loud. Be modest. True of us? Hello, talk to me now. Everywhere is calm. Eh? For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive <laughs> by the good. It's just against being loud. You know what I mean by being loud, being excessive in what you are doing. It, your fashion should not take your consciousness. It should not get everything about you. You stay on the mirror for two hours and you forget that the way your hair is, once you walk, breeze will change it. And you pray for five minutes. No. Be modest. He said it should be the hidden man of the heart. Let's do something. First Peter and chapter 3. Verse 1. First Peter 3 and 1. Quickly. First Peter 3 and 1. So don't forget, it's the beauty of holiness. It's not the ugliness of holiness. So holiness we have is beautiful. Nobody is talking. I say holiness we have is what? Holiness does not make people ugly, but holiness make you beautiful. That is why it is called beauty of... What are you doing as if you don't know the Bible? Beauty of what? Does holiness have beauty or ugliness? So when you are ugly in holiness, we question your holiness. I read, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. Next verse, follow now, follow now. Because why they behold your chest, your holy conversation, coupled with what? Fear, reverence. That's what he's talking about. Who's adorning? That is, who trying to get someone's attention? Let it not be the outward adorning of plating of hair. Is he against you plating hair? He said that should not be the emphasis. And of wearing of gold. Did he say you should not wear gold? Or of putting on of apparel. Did he say you should walk naked? You know, you know yes, our women, they get into, how will you wear a skirt? You cut it here to this place. He said it doesn't matter, brother. Sister, it matters. In Jesus' name. What did I say? It matters. You have won a long skirt here. Then there is a road that a trailer travels. And it stays like this. And let me be very frank. Women are wonderful species. True of us. Your tie looks glittery. And so as you open it like this, Jesus said, Jesus said, you are confused. Pastor, I was preaching in Bori. Many years ago in the campus, Polytechnic. I preached and preached. As I turned like this, a fine, beautiful girl. Fair. He did me like <laughs> As the guy winked the eye, the guy winked the eye, I said, Lord, I will never look there again. I felt like I started preaching. I finished preaching, carried my Bible, and went away. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So give me that. <laughs> Come on, verse... Three and four, another rendering. Another rendering, three and four. Why are you laughing? Is it truth? Praise God. So, look up, look up. We are trying to flesh that question out. 
What matters is not your outward. Did he say you should not give attention to your poor appearance? But that should not be the matter. The styling of your hair, the jewelry you wear, the cut of your clothes. When women, the, the one they are doing now, women will, I don't know, they pop up the breast. Sometimes you want to choke them. Then they will cut. No, it's just, let's talk. You bring question, I will talk. I will talk. It's, what is remaining is, if you do like this, if we don't fall off, we will use two hands. Put it back. That's what is remaining. I put it back. That's what is remaining. As they push it up, then they will cut it like this. That is, you know, it is danger. Wahala de. Wahala de. They are not coming. No, it's, you are laughing, but it's the truth. And Mecca, you are the one that asks question. And your good work should not be, it's not a good work to pop it up. You almost touch it. Then you see cutting. Is that good work? That's what Timothy was talking about. That's seduction. There is an attire of a harlot. Don't wear the attire of a harlot. I saw something on the social media recently. He said, now we, oh, now we on Sunday, we wear cloth when you want to see. But for those places, now we see they wear like that. You see, a harlot is a human being like us. What makes you decipher a harlot is by their... So when you are coming to church on a Sunday, consider the brother sitting close to you. If the skirt is short and you cut here again, you just, sha! It doesn't, it doesn't mean holiness unto the Lord. Me, I'm facing God. Others are not facing God. They are facing your leg. Praise God. <laughs> Any other question? I did I answer that question where? Uh -huh, verse 4. But your inner disposition, cultivated inner beauty, the gentle, gracious kind that God, what, which one is God interested in? The inner one. Ask your question so that we'll close on time. We are true. Sister Jessica, who again? Sister Jessica, brother Jackson, let's ask all together. It's just that Mecca tempted me. Time should be on our side. Yes, we have, we have used 10 minutes to answer Mecca's question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Papi, just like uh, Brother Kenyon, like he quoted. Yes. I want to ask, uh, if I'm working, for example, I'm working for an unbeliever, maybe as a secretary, and maybe I'm not feeling fine, and I want to take excuse to say, and for me not to confess negative, so I'm, not te I'm, I'm telling the man, like, I'm very strong. The man doesn't understand. If you're very strong, why not continue working? So how will I take that excuse without being negative? Fantastic. You see, this is where believers have missed it. Faith, I, I want you to write this down. I learned it many years ago. Faith does not deny the natural evidence of things. It is as a result of the natural evidence of things you exercise faith. True of us. So write it down. Faith does not deny the natural evidence of things. Excuse me, sir. I don't. So faith, let me say faith does not deny the natural evidence of things. So there is a mountain. That's why it's a say to that mountain. So you have health challenge. I have health challenge. That is what occasion you exercising your faith. So you take your permission by speaking exactly what he understands. And as you live there, you speak the language your body should understand. True? Did I answer your question? Say that with me. Faith does not deny 
the natural evidence of things. I learned that many years ago. So, ah, this place, ah, I'm feeling pain here. Yeah, that's the evidence, the natural evidence. But I speak to it. It's where, over half a, it's where with this leg. I spoken words over it. I spoken words over it. It was really hot. Praise God. Go ahead. Be fast. Use your microphone. Okay. Go. No, sir, I'm just coming. Acts four thirteen. Acts four thirteen. Acts four thirteen. Every, you ask question, everywhere look up. But sister Geoffrey, you are asking question, you are contributing. I heard you talking, so I want to know where you belong. Everybody read now. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been so, if I'm an Ogoni man, I have Ogoni people who are developed in their mind. They may not have a degree. And I teach in their language. They can understand me. What they have learned is what they also teach. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. This is how God uses people. Jessica, Second Timothy 2 2. Please, we'll use on that rendering for this. Let's use on that rendering first. Let's use on that rendering first. Please, two different renderings. Please, take me back to Acts 4.13. 4, Two different rendering. Message, energy. Please take note. Let's be fast because of time. He said, they couldn't take their eyes off them. Peter and John standing there so confident. They were not, they were fishermen. No formal education. So such a, so sure. With no training in where or former, did God use them? Did God use Peter and John? So, stop following. They say that is why the Bible say. Did you hear what I just said? I don't follow them. Say, eh, is the training those people have been hearing? You know, is the doctrine? I say, your being tossed to and fro is. Based on your doctrine. Is it not what we taught today? That's the doctrine they have taught those people. Those people feel God can never use me. Give me another rendering. Have we read this? Yes. He said, uh, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scripture. They also recognized them as men. So what was that training? They had been with Jesus. So what did they see in Jesus? 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Is it where I quoted? 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Quickly. So you can actually be in... Are we saying you should not go to get education? No. If I have the opportunity to get an education, come on, go, out, go for it. But is it all educated people God uses? Uh-huh. So, and the things that thou hast uh -huh, among the same who shall be able to that is how the gospel moves you are here now you listen what you listen you teach others that's how the gospel travels as far as you can understand what i have taught you cannot pass the same knowledge to the other people if you have opportunity of education please add it will broaden your horizon 
but it does not stop how God uses you. Am I communicating? Another question. No, pastor, you'll be the last. Give her question. Two persons here. Go ahead. Two. Let's take the double body at once. Sister Nurse and Sister Chica. Sister Chica has been discussing her own. So let's take Sister, Sister Chica first. Eh? Eh, let them use their voice. Or would you, can you be transversing here? So you'll be taking the microphone. Papi, <laughs> like we are taught in the church that the church is to praise Christ and him crucified. Now, conversion is coming up. I will come to the church and give her talk, drama, and all those things that we do in conversion. Is it right for us to do all those things? Thank you. Papi, my question is not for today's uh, topic. I want to ask, but I can't remember the Bible, okay, that says that you should give a strong ring to a man that wants to, okay, and maybe someone who has full understanding of Christ, maybe a child of God that has been well rooted and you are doing a business of selling hot drink, maybe you don't take it. Or you are selling it to people. Is it a sin? Praise God. So I'll start with Sister um, um, Nurse. Sister Nurse asked a question. We have convention forthcoming. And we want to do drama, do this thing, do this. Is it right? It will be wrong if what we preach from the drama is not Christ. Eh? But if we feel... We are teaching on the subject and we need to act it for the, for the level of others who cannot comprehend quickly. We now use uh, you know, imagery to drive home the point. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. However, the gospel is preached more than being dramatized. So people should look beyond the drama to the message. Praise God. Did that answer Sister Nons? Oh. It's not wrong. You know why it's not wrong? The people who gather in church are believers. And you just came to educate them on their environment. The Bible will say, does not nature teach you these things? There is a place where nature will teach you these things. And that's why we get health people to tell us the things about nature. Take, for instance, we came to preach, uh, to pray this morning. And the people who were in attendance, you remember we took time to talk about health. Like the issue of uh, what's the name of COVID in town? I faith it, but I wear mask when I go out. Faith says it's rainy season, carry umbrella. Faith does not say rainy season, I bind rain when others are calling for rain. Did you hear what I just said? So faith says it's rainy season, what do I go out with? You go out with the umbrella. So in the same vein, when we came, we started explaining about health. So what did we say? We told them, there is what they call zinc, Azithromycin, which is an antibiotics. And then we talked about, uh, what again? Vitamin C. That people should, once, 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 try to just take this thing. That's one. Two, I told them, it's my practice. If I'm going home now, if I see garlic, you know garlic? I have ginger at home. My garlic, I finished it. My wife can attest to that. I'll chip it, boil it to a certain level, to foam. Then I'll carry towel from my room. I'll do steam. You know what it's called steam? You cover yourself. Then i open my mouth, nose, let the heat go inside. But this is papi that doesn't get sick. Did you hear what I just said? Prevention is cheaper. Because you meet with people. And some people, when they are talking to you, they want to even put their mouth in your mouth. <laughs> and then you just see one granite they ate and was angry as <laughs> Okay, let me start with 
someone who works in the brewery. Someone who works in the brewery is actually doing his work. And it has nothing to do with who consumes it. Am I communicating? Now, if someone says, okay, my faith level is that I want to say alcohol, I don't have a problem with that person. Can I say that again? I don't have a problem with that person. But if you grow, you say, oh, I don't want to sell alcohol. I also don't have a problem with you. It's a matter of choice with you. Now, can I say something again? Alcohol is not altogether bad. Oh. What did I say? Your Eba has alcohol. Drop, sister knows, am I right? The spirit you use in cleaning your hand, what is it? Alcohol. You know, just like marijuana, people take Igbo, Abi, whatever. Most of the drugs you take, they use those things in making it. It is the abuse of those substances that they are against. Am I communicating? It's the abuse that people are against. When Jesus turned water into wine, which kind of wine? How do you know it's alcohol? No, let's talk. How do you know it's alcohol? No, don't be afraid. You see, one of the things... The church will not grow until we are ready to talk from the Bible. Now, look at the answer. Let, look at the answer. The people, please now listen, Sister Noss. Listen now. Listen. Is it, am I endorsing you to go and drink alcohol? No, that's not what I just said. Jesus said, the people, the chairman of the occasion said, when men are drunk, now you are bringing a better wine. Does Coke intoxicate you? Can you be drunk by Coke? That suggests that they drank Something, nah, alcohol. I didn't say it's Kai Kai or Schnapp or Squadron. That's just a name. Praise the name. Have you noticed that when you eat a bite in the night, you load, you start seeing different dreams. There will be fermentation in your body. It's alcohol that is working. I hope you know. It's sedative, praise God. So, Sister Chica, you just come with 1980 question. Looking for a man that is living in 2021. Apple Macau. <laughs> Don't behave like the Pharisees. The Bible says the Pharisees will be coming to tempt Jesus. Is it lawful? Is it lawful that? That's the kind of question Sister Chica is asking. Praise God. Bless tonight. Any other question before we close? Sister, uh, mommy has a question. And pastor, we'll take these two. Son-in-law and mother-in-law. 